Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. Uh, I'm Jake. Welcome back. It's good to be back with something other than just a live stream, although that was very fun, the return we did uh, a few days ago. We came back and decided to punish ourselves with yet another Christian film that is... You said we. Yeah. I had no say in this. No. Anyway. I didn't decide to do the punishment. This is... This is... BDSM. This is BDSM. Escape from Hell. It's bad. And I have the special edition DVD. I can't possibly imagine what's so special about it. And DVD features, it says, enhanced visual effects, which to me means, <laughs> no. which to me means at one point, this was in a worse version with worse effects. Wait, and wait. then they went in and like George lucas it. Okay, this so... is the special edition. This is fucking that dance in Jobs Palace, but the Christian movie version. So I had to watch it on YouTube because you had the DVD. Did you watch the DVD? Uh, no, I also watched it on YouTube, which oh, okay. may be available. I whatever, but we also have the DVD, it is, which it's I'm gonna... available on YouTube. So, uh, so maybe okay. At least we watched the same version um, because it needed the improvement on that. Uh, so oh, I'm I'm very I'm very glad that they they. They saw the release and were like, you know what? When this comes to DVD, let's let's hit it again. Let's hit it in the editing room one more time. Let's give it another pass throw. This way, it will be, it will be the masterpiece we know it to be. You know what? If there is a difference between the DVD and the YouTube versions, I'll show some side by sides, and we'll we'll get to see the difference. If not, and the one we saw is the special edition with the enhanced visual effects. Oh boy. <laughs> Remember that scene in Kevin Sorbo's Let There Be Light where they go into the, the weird CG tunnel and we were like... I miss it. I pine for those days. And we were like, how could you put this effect in a movie and think it's okay? Wow. The bar continues to lower. So without further ado, I guess let's talk about the actual plot and what the fuck happens in this movie because it is bizarre. Wow. So uh, at least they, they wrote a reason in for this, but the very first scene... Is well. First of all, of course, they start with a quote, which I forgot. It doesn't matter. But of course, it's start free with a, space yeah. on Christian movie bingo. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the free space. Of course, you're you're totally right. Um, and we hit bingo about five minutes in, but it's whatever. But it starts in a fucking boiler room, and I thought that was a budgetary thing. It both is and isn't. They wrote a reason into the movie later on that they talk about, but like also. That's where they shot it. I feel like they're aping a little bit. Someone had recently watched one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies or one of the terrible sequels. Uh -huh. um, except for number two, which is just fabulous. And um, number one's the one with the De Johnny though, right? Yeah, that's not his best performance, but he does become a blood volcano. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is kind of a Halloween episode. This is a sort of. This is a spooky, scary Christian movie that's sort of the hell house of movies mm -hmm. in that it tries to scare you into becoming Christian. Initially, the movie begins in this creepy Nightmare on Elm Street desk boiler room. Um, and everything's in slow motion, but I have a feeling that maybe the cameras they had. One of two things happened. The cameras they had either couldn't go at a high enough frame rate to capture slow motion well because the, it's barely... That's usually what happens. It's barely slow-mo. It's, it's like, like... They just like skip frames. It's maybe 50%, which isn't very much slow-mo, honestly. Yeah. Um, or it's just a strange creative choice. And frankly, there are enough of those in the movie that I would also accept that. You know what was really weird about basically this whole movie is? The lighting is the same in the boiler room as everywhere else. I thought it was just dark in the boiler room. This might be the most visually dark movie we've ever watched. Because they, they have, I think they had the budget for like one and a half lights. And then also like hopefully the sun comes out today while we're filming. Because it was, it was, it was drab. And no, but here's the thing. This is what's fascinating about this movie to me. Most of the movies we watch, like God's Not Dead, even the ones that are higher budget, like the God's Not Dead sequels, um, 
they tend to, how do I put this? They have very bland visuals. They oh, yeah. put a lot more emphasis on the script and the performances. I now laugh here at fucking Kevin Sorbo and his terrible performances. But um, seriously, they're not paying any attention to the cinematography almost at all, or the lighting or anything. There's no mood, it's just here's a scene, and it's generally flat and two people talking. This movie, there was an auteur involved in this film. What's the name of the director? Okay, putting a, putting a, a, an effect, like a, like a shader over top of your, a filter over everything that you watch is not... Is not directorship. No, but like, like the there was actual like they did lighting. Like Dutch angles. There were I know they did. Come on, they had also just watched Battlefield Earth. Jesus um, Christ! There was thought put into the lighting because they wanted this to be like a nightmarish, dark hospital. Like I'm not saying it's done well because it's not, but like okay. someone put effort into it, and it astounds me that they're like, yes, put this out. Okay, this, someone this put is... effort into that recreation that that. That restoration of that Jesus portrait years ago, yeah. she put a lot of fucking effort into that. It doesn't mean we accept it. It doesn't mean we say this is the standard to which you you missed, but like, damn it, you tried. No, no this is capitalist America, god damn it. But it, that, that painting became a meme for a reason. Because it's awful. And hard effort put forth via ineptitude is just as fascinating as, like, a great film but put out by like a great But this isn't like Breen. No, no, Breen, no. it's like, not only does he write, direct, and, and star in the movies, but, like, you know that it, like, beyond that, it, like, hurts his feelings. The final time I saw Kale broke my heart. Although we were now humanoids, I still felt a bond and love for him. Which makes the Breen phenomenon so good. Whereas, like, Tommy was so, like, like steers into it. Breen is like, no, I'm a fucking director. This guy right here, whoever this is, I don't know who it is. I don't feel like he cares. I don't feel like it hurts his feelings that I'm making this right now. I completely disagree. You I think get, it hurts him right now? I get the feeling that the person who directed this put their heart and soul into this movie. And we haven't even talked about the plot yet. Anyway, no. at the beginning of the film... After the slow motion scene, uh, have you seen Flatliners? This is Flatliners. It's Flatliners. It's shitty Flatliners. Honestly, I thought there was going to be a twist in this movie. Did you think that too? Because of the way it was shot? I thought it was like, oh, the hospital's been hell the whole time. Oh, no. I was like, that'd be, eh. I Escape from hell. No. I assumed it was just, um, in fairness, that was the twist of another movie we watched, that abortion one. I died on the operating table at the abortion clinic. I committed suicide. But I, I, I assumed they were just going for a general nightmare dream vibe the whole time, despite it not making sense, really. They should have saved that for the money shot hell scene at the end. See, maybe, I don't know, when, the, when did this come out? Was it in the 2000s? Oh, yeah. 2000, exactly. Exactly 2000? Okay, so it's before, but, like, I feel like a Constantine vibe would have worked better. Maybe. Huh? Where it's it's sort of like, it's like the streets are weird and open, but, like, there's, like, a... I don't know. Like, even the church was darkly lit. It was really weird. Well, it was the middle of the night like, of the church. Well, I know, but even they do a pan-up at the end of the movie, and it's still just, like, dark. It's, like, awful, but... It's supposed to be foreboding. It's not. It's just odd. Okay, so let, let me say this as well. Um, I guess we should actually talk about the plot since that... That's kind of where we're headed. Okay, so it begins again with that scene where there's a guy being flatliners. Oh, yeah. It's not Kevin Bacon either, which... Honestly, I could have used a bacon respite during this. He's having these visions of terrible things, and it's implied that it's hell. And he wakes up. And they immediately give him morphine. Now, I'm not a doctor. It sounds like you shouldn't do that. Someone has just been resuscitated from cardiac arrest or... Uh, in fairness, also, it was cardiac arrest, but they used the paddles. That's not what you use those paddles for. You use that for, like, cardiac arrhythmia, I think, like when there's a strange know. pattern. I don't do doctor things. You should double check that. Randy. Dr. Randy. Randy. Tell us. Anyway, so after giving him the morphine, I also like my fan theory that all of what happens is just a morphine fucking dream <laughs> after the fact. But anyway, after they revive him, uh, he goes to a hospital. 
darkly lit again. And again, the shots are thought out, so someone, like, storyboarded this shit, believe it or not. <laughs> Our bar is at least they wrote it down before they turned the camera on. Uh, yeah, we have a shelf full of DVDs that show that the bar is very low. Uh, well, Willie Ames, yeah, yeah. Well, Chad, you just might be right. Anyway. So as he's in the hospital, he decides, in a panic, to escape the hospital, <laughs> which would also would have been a good title for the movie. That's what I thought. Okay, so that's why I immediately thought, oh, hospital's hell. Because he's trying to get out. But then he does immediately. He just, he hijacks an ambulance and leaves. And then the security guard, best actor in the film, runs after it and then thinks... I only get paid $15 an hour to be a security guard. I'm no hero. And then throws his hands up and starts to turn off camera before they cut it. <laughs> so he runs away to a church. And at this church, he's driving on morphine, by the way. Also a really good choice. You should not drive on morphine. No. But probably very fun. Yeah. Think about how whooshy everything would be. Sure. So he gets into the church and there is... Uh, Again, another big thing in uh, Christian movie bingo, wise black pastor. That's a big trope. Um, unless you're in the movie Pastor White, in which case the trope is reversed. God help us. Thank you, ma'am. And it's a white guy in a black church. Yeah, Christian movies are weird. Anyway. So he gets there, and the guy's like, whoa, what are you doing here? Like, it's a church. Yeah. People come into churches, man. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, what are, you, what are you doing here? Are you a criminal? I'm acting. All the acting in this movie is so surreal. There's this thing. I brought it back. It, it, it keeps chasing me. Keeps chasing you? What keeps chasing you? It's like a soap opera dialed up to 11. I don't know if any of these people have done anything else. I looked at their IMDb's. It looked like some of them did mostly Christian stuff. But it's all bad in almost the exact same way. Yeah. It's just dialed to a weird place. What do we got here? Another member of the Couch Potato Club? Tad Garrison. Father of two. Architect. Well, his blockage looks like the freeway at rush hour. His lifestyle isn't hard to imagine. Eggs and legs all week, beers and steers on the weekend. Which again makes me think they were being directed to do this. That part always does feel, and I don't know if it's a lack of talent, because I feel like if I were to act, I wouldn't be up there where they're at. You know what I mean? Like, I might fall flat. I'm by no means an actor. I can do a little bit of the stupid chick track stuff, but like, what turns out, Turns out there's a reason we do YouTube, okay? Um, uh, but I feel like there has to... What is it with the mentality of Christian directors where it's like, no, melodrama. Look, I've been sober for the last six months. Eric, my life has changed. It needs to... We need to feel. We need to be down here. Every evil person talks like this, and every hero is like this. I don't know. I don't know. What is it? It's not giving me anything. I felt nothing this entire movie except for, boy, I wonder what's on Twitter. No. And then I would set it back down. Anyway, so what happens next is we get our final, or uh, we finally get to the flashback that begins back at the beginning of the story. So he goes to the pastor and he's like, I'm not breaking into the church despite me being on drugs. The guy asks, by the way, are you on drugs? And he's like, no, which is a lie. We saw them give him morphine. Well, to be fair, maybe he doesn't consider that a drug because he's only a medical doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's okay though. He He's he's also addicted to <gasps> antidepressants. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we, oh. cut, we cut back to like a week or two before the events <laughs> you know, of the morphine. Do you know, I forgot that the whole thing was a big straw man. Yeah. I forgot. Oh, yeah. That's right. So we cut back two weeks and this patient uh, who's on the morphine and, uh, was actually a doctor. This doctor was a very, how do I put this? It's like someone watched House but they didn't realize House was popping Vicodin. So they're like, yeah. this doctor is also addicted to pills. But they're like, SSRIs, which you can't, <laughs> which you can't be like addicted to in that sort of way. That's not what SSRIs do. But uh, apparently SSRIs are bad. The movie makes that very clear. I was 29 years old. 
had achieved the career I'd always wanted, but it wasn't enough. I had run through all of the antidepressants. I went to therapy until I realized I knew 10 times more than my therapist. Oh yeah, no, if you are depressed, you need to buck up, kiddo. You need to, you need to get yourself some Jesus. Go to church. You know what? There's no SSRI in church. <laughs> so some people come into the hospital, a daughter and a father. Uh, this reminded me a lot of a house beginning, too. You know how in the uh, house TV show they would often have, like, a beginning scene where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, here's a person going Spooky about their... diagnosis. <laughs> here's them going about their everyday life. Oh, look, they fell over or something, and there's a disease. Oh, really? It's the kid that's sick! Yeah. Uh, in this, there's a daughter with a snake bite, and the father is there, yep. and you think, Bait oh, and switch. something's gonna happen to the daughter. Nope, the father has a heart attack. Ooh, got him, because he's worried. Yeah. Uh, after this happens, the guy is resuscitated, and he says to the doctor, like, Oh, I felt so at peace. The guy effectively went to heaven. And at this point, we get the first shot of the most amazing visual effect ever put to film. I saw myself shooting through this tunnel. It's like... If Doctor Who still had the budget of 1963 <laughs> Doctor Who, but they were still making the show. It reminded me of, and I don't know why, it gave me very strong toothpaste commercial feel. Yeah! And I don't know what it is about it, it just does. Like, it'd be like, dive into the freshness! Right, I feel, okay, look okay. look at this, look at this, and, and, it, and tell me what flavor of toothpaste this is. <laughs> I think it's probably those. Remember that mints with the with the breath strips in it, and it looked like glitter. It's probably that one. So that guy who has incredible heart problems, they they <laughs> do the thing where they put up the the whatever the fuck it is, the CT scan. Is that a thing? Randy, help me. I'm bad at this. Anyway, uh, MRI maybe. No, I don't know. He puts up a thing that they scanned with some sort of medical device. There's a reason. Again, I'm on YouTube, uh, and they're like, "Wow, this guy's heart is just." Fuckered. There, he is, he is dead tomorrow. Uh, and they go to that guy, and he's like, oh, whatever, I'm at peace, because it was amazing, this heaven tunnel that I was in. Like, I never wanted to leave, there was no pain, there was no anxiety. I was minty it, fresh. It definitely was not my brain being flooded with chemicals as it ceases to function. It's not DMT, it's fine. It's just, it's heaven. At this hospital... By happenstance, by the way, there's like <laughs> there's a woman. <laughs> it's it's basically it, Mulder from X Files, but a lady that is hell bent on proving the existence of the afterlife. So this doctor, the psychiatrist, is running a study about people who have had near death experiences at the hospital. People who have claimed that they have died and gone to heaven or gone to hell. Interestingly, the reasoning she gives for this is she says she wants to give people hope if she could somehow prove that there is an afterlife, uh, a positive afterlife, heaven, that everyone goes to when they die. People with terminal illnesses will have less anxiety. Now, there are several problems with this. Can't empirically prove the existence of something like the afterlife. Right. You just can't based on how ethereal the idea is and how non, like, testable that idea is. But she does do a couple things. Uh, she is of the opinion, and this is a airtight, airtight experiment she's running. If I put a sign on the top of the hospital, as people's souls float away, they'll be able to read the sign, and if they can tell me what the sign says on the roof of the hospital, that means they were floating up to heaven. Because as we all know, heaven is a corporeal place in the clouds, and your soul floats up there. Like fucking Poochie from The Simpsons. This is based on urban legend of people seeing, um, like, uh, pictures on shelves that are out of view from them and shit like that, uh, that are above their bed. Um, I don't know that we actually have any studies verifying any no. of that because uh, it's bullshit. I'm aware it's a trope with that where, like, people with near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences say, I was seeing my body from up here or whatever, but it seems like a weird thing to hinge. I've been high, too. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a strange thing to hinge your entire experiment on. Interestingly, yeah. she's of the opinion, like, heaven, everyone goes to heaven, despite, like, no religion well, saying that that's the case. Later on, she'll talk to a drug user. Who used a drug. Yeah. Used a drug. You know what the drug was? 
less than morphine. <laughs> it was heroin. I used heroin, and then I OD'd, and I went to hell for a minute. The doctor killed himself and used morphine, and the morphine came after. But after the morphine, he's he's going to see some heaven. So it's really weird where their morality lies. It's weird to me that she she's running an experiment and using people's anecdotal stories right. to try and evidence the fact that there is a heaven that everyone goes to. However, multiple people in her study have said they've gone to hell. She ignores the people who are telling her I had a near-death experience and it was bad. Yeah. She thinks those people are crazy, but the people who went to heaven, they're for real. This is the most biased study I've ever seen in my life. It's hilarious. It's a one-person non-blind study, so... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of blind, there is a scene in which... Oh, yeah! Oh, fuck! That's one of the times I laughed out loud. So, they have this woman who is, I assume, not blind in real life. Maybe she is. If she is... She'll never see this. That's good. Good for her. Anyway, so, she apparently was walking across the street, as blind people do. <laughs> you know what's funny about this? You know, how they wrote this is so funny. Okay, she walks across the street, uh, someone's blowing a red light, she's gonna get hit by the truck. But the way they wrote this was like, and then there was people on one side of the road and the other side of the road, and they were both yelling at me, and because I'm blind, I didn't know which way to go! Cause they're both yelling! Do I go left or right? So I stood there. <laughs> and got hit. So she gets hit by a car. Yeah. She also feels the minty, fresh flavor of heaven. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it was a Suburban? Yeah. I think she got hit by a Suburban. I think she does one of these, doesn't she? I ever? think her shoes probably flew off, too. Yeah, that's how you know you die. Yeah. It's the shoes. And she's like, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Ooh! And then they're like, how could she see? She's been blind forever. <laughs> well, so, that's, that's the blind ladies. <laughs> Meanwhile, as all, as all this is happening... I'm sorry, I'm just remembering. Like, but she really, really can't see. And then she's like, no, but I saw colors. Yeah. It's like, okay. It, it reminds me of when people like get brain injuries and then they start speaking Spanish while playing the piano. Yeah. Do you also believe that shit or what? <laughs> so, uh, the main character, his father shows up. It's implied that his father was like a terrible, alcoholic, abusive asshole. Mm. Um... And he's now become a born-again Christian, and it is implied that he should forgive him um, with basically no caveats. Like, God forgave him, you should forgive him. We don't really know the actual history of the abuse, was he like... Well, God wasn't getting cigarettes put out on his fucking yeah. uh, hips. Even the mom is like, hey, you should forgive your father. I forgave him because God forgave him. Like, eh, also, forgiveness yeah. can be a great thing, but it's not necessarily something that is guaranteed to be granted. You know what I mean? I think the fetish of forgiveness is, is fucking weird. Yeah, I feel like it gives people a little bit of a pass to do whatever the fuck they want and not worry about it because they can always be forgiven later. But that's a philosophical conversation for another day. All you need to know is, this guy is a born-again Christian now. The son isn't having any of it. Back with a uh, guy who had a heart attack, he's like, I'm ready to die, whatever. So he does. He dies. And this is the most hilarious metaphysical revelation we have in this movie. And that is, God is a fucking asshole because he does go back into the crest tunnel and he's like woo this is great Cold gate, heaven mystery. woo and then all of a sudden <sighs> fucking fire and flames like not only does god send people to hell he gives them a little taste of heaven first just but to I, be like nah bitch the same thing will happen later but what we never understand why he goes to hell I assume he just wasn't Christian. They never say specifically. So why does he give him a little... It's like... I don't know. It's, it's like giving him the most addictive drug ever and then being like... Psych. Yep. Okay. Pretty fucked up. Okay. So that guy's in hell now. Don't worry. We'll see him again. We will see him again. And I don't know why. I still don't know why. I don't know why. So, moving on, um, the doctor has some more interactions with the other doctor. He hears about other people having these near-death experiences and how positive it is and how it'll make you feel, like, loved and accepted and yep. th this this wash of, like, 
wonderful feelings. And again, it's interspersed with him, like, taking his SSRIs, because he apparently suffers from depression, which a lot of people do, and that's fine. It's great that we have the medication to help people on in that. Uh, I take SSRIs, for instance. Another interesting uh, way to take the film would be he experiences uh, heaven-like sensations when taking SSRIs and hell-like ones when, when not. And really, the hell was in us all along. Take care of the mentally unwell. Maybe. But nope! Does he throw away the pills? Yeah, he throws them in like the toilet or something at some point. He gets rid of them. He does like a hike, a mountain hike at some point. Does he do something with them then? I don't know. Maybe it's just cardio. He's pretty fit. He's got a nice chin. At this point, he (laughs) calls up one of his buddies... He was also a doctor, and he's like... The guy from the beginning in the boiler room. Yeah. Yeah. This is where it all comes back around. Aww. He's like, hey, bud. And the guy's like, well, oh, where are you? I'm in the boiler room. And he's like, why are you in the boiler room? I'm about to kill myself. You better come and resuscitate me. Flatliners. I have a flip phone. Flatliners. Was Kiefer Sutherland also in that movie, or am I making that up? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen Flatliners. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> so, he does, in fact administer something to himself to render him dead. His heart stops, his brain stops functioning, I assume. And for all intents and purposes within the film, he goes to hell. Now, once again, we find that God is kind of a jerk because for a second, he does uh, get to go to heaven. It looks like heaven is like a Windows 2000 desktop background. (laughs) Maybe one you download from a shady site and it gives you some new toolbars or something. And then a ghost, I guess it's an angel. It looks like a ghost, but it's more of an angel shows up and is like, what are you doing here? Get the fuck out and kicks him out straight into hell. And this is when things get fantastic. That was, uh, so that ghost was, was he connected in any way to someone else or was it just random force ghost? It was just an angel. It looked like a force ghost. Yeah, it did. Um... Kiefer Sutherland was in there, so was Julia Roberts and William Baldwin. Oh, okay. Goddamn Baldwins, they're everywhere. They just, they just, they they're just like gremlins, up. they get into everything and tear it apart. Don't feed them cocaine after midnight and they'll stop showing up. Yeah, there you go. Uh, by the way, before this, the, the father, who used to be an alcoholic, dies. But it's okay that he dies, because he dies reading the Bible in a hotel room, so you know he's okay. Yeah. That's the, that's the sort of inciting incident that gets the doctor to officially decide to kill himself because he had been having visions these dreams of his father burning in hell and you can see the flesh melt off it was actually like it's not a good effect but i respect that the movie went for the flesh melting you know what i mean do you indiana jones is a thing i know i know but i'm saying think think about the normal movies we watch jake think about it they would never do a flesh melting scene. Can you imagine Kevin Sorbo getting his Mel, off? Mel Gibson would. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in hell, the doctor finds himself in fucking hell. Yeah. And it's <laughs> bad. I laughed so much. I so the heaven thing was really, really funny, obviously. Yeah, the guy's like, oh, hey. And this is actually a line I like, because I'm like, at least they're building an internal consistent mythology. They're like, oh, yeah, sometimes they don't torture us because the anticipation only increases the torture. Uh, You know what? Give me 10 years, I feel like I'm over it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it'll hurt, but like, meh. Nothing else going on, right? I feel feel like you can't ratchet it up anymore. It's like a hard, it's a hard ceiling to yeah. to pain. Unless you start giving, maybe in hell they have the magic to give us different senses. Yeah. Mm. What if you could? What if you could feel your hair? You can taste pain. Yeah. Anyway, so they go around and you see some people being tortured. Again, it's like Hell House at level acting where people are just like, ah, they're under my skin. Worms. There's worms there, and that guy's in hell. The funny thing is we never actually see Satan or anything, so to me, every time some horrible torture was going on, I just thought to myself, God's doing that. Well, so the <laughs> worm guy implied that they were invisible. I guess. That's a good way to to, to try and lampshade your budget. budget. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, they walk down the fucking... It's sort of like that highway in India on the side of the mountain, except in hell. Which, both are my hell, but still. Uh, and then they see a uh, heart attack dad. Heart attack dad's there, and he's got he's got goo on him. from. Uh, remember the, uh, it's Ivan Ooze goo. Yeah. It's, it makes me think, 
this is this would be like running into someone you happen to know once from childhood in like New York City. There's so many people in in hell. Wouldn't it be amazing to just run across the one person you saw two days ago? Like, holy shit, what a coincidence! Uh, finally, he's like, "Where's my father?" And they're like, "Your father's not here." And he's like, "How do you know?" And he's like, oh, 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 "I was a demon oh. all along." All metaphysical entities are just like psych. They they're Borat, not. That's like the one joke they all have. God, the angels, the demons, all have a terrible sense of humor. It's like, it's 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 basically just Ben Shapiro. Yeah, so the demons go ahead and attack him. I should say demon. They only have the budget to make one person look fiery. Um, mm -hmm. Which also looks bad when you have fire person and fire background and brimstone. It doesn't look very yeah, good. So this is happening while he's being resuscitated because again, it's a flash. It's a it's, it's, a, it's a full circle thing. So anyway, he gets he gets resuscitated. Bagoosh! And he's like, ah, I gotta run away from the demons. So he does. And yeah. then we end up at the church. And that's how everything came full circle. Sort of like Thor Ragnarok. I wonder. I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation. He meets an angel, and the angel is like. Hey, what's up? And he's like, where's my dad? I want to see my dad. And even though he was an asshole. And he's like, oh, you'll see him again someday. And I guess he got saved or something. That guy, for some reason, as opposed to everyone else who's ever lived on planet Earth, yeah. got to know for a fact there is a hell and a heaven and base his decision to become saved on that and not just, like, people saying that it's a thing. That guy's losing his medical license and he stole an ambulance and the police are there in the shot at the end and he's going away. But the best part about that last shot is how gassed up the preacher is. Yeah. He's like, when the, when the camera's zooming up... He's he's going nuts. He's very he's very he's feeling the spirit or whatever you do, I guess. Uh, this movie was was bad. You like it, and I don't know why. I was, I was maybe more bored about this movie than I was over probably anything we've watched in the last year. How do I put this? It's fascinating. Have you ever heard of the movie? Didn't make me laugh though. Have you heard of the movie after last season? Mm -mm. Wrong. Appears to be very small. My hometown is near Terraland. Oh. Yeah, I've, I've never been to that town, but I've been through it. Okay, that's a pretty interesting movie. I don't watch it, it's really not worth your time. But, like, where the performances and the surreal nature of the filmmaking is so bad and so strange, it almost becomes art in and of itself in the sense that you're just wondering to yourself, how did someone decide to make this in this specific way? Like if Black Swan was a failure. Sure. It reminds me a little bit of that in the sense that this wasn't just some white bread director who was like, I'm just gonna show up and light things flat and fucking film it. This person had a vision, it was a bad vision, but they executed it. And that's what fucking matters. You know what I mean? There was effort. There was flavor to this film. There was a flavor. I didn't say it was a good flavor, but it's like something. It was Burger King chicken nuggets. Yes. Which is bad. That's why they sell them so cheaply. So, I'm that's gonna, Escape I'm... from Hell. As we mentioned, this is available on YouTube. Please watch it. Jake will probably disagree. Would you recommend this for someone to watch? Oh, man. I, it might be... It's so poorly lit. It's hard to, like, visually watch. I feel like you'd have to be... A, under the influence of something to really enjoy it. I wasn't, and I thought it was entertaining. Then again, I do this. We do this. I, I know, this but I mean, like, for normal people who aren't, like, looking at the light at the end of the tunnel for this, where it's basically just an hour of them being annoyed, there are some better, there are some better movies that address this kind of thing. Um, there's one movie in particular, I can't remember the name of it, but they reuse the same hell set over and over and over and over uh, that is similar to this where they basically have to escape from hell uh, and it's better. I don't know what it's called, so it's a terrible recommendation. But this this is like a it's it's like a Halloween episode of a sitcom or a, a, a um, soap opera. I get what you mean. You know what I mean? It's got such a fucking feel to it. That's that why I like it. It's like just I off. Think if they sold it to me like that. 
Like, if it had, like, a big ensemble cast of a bunch of people, like, and there was, like, an amnesia doctor somewhere, I feel like I would have liked it if it was just really, really shitty. Like, someone tried their best and failed. But this, I don't know. I don't know. I like this in a similar way to that I like Neil Breen movies, in that when you watch a Neil Breen movie, <laughs> I can picture the script in my head and how he probably pictured the movie would turn out See, versus how it actually turned that's out. That's why I like Cristiano movies, because I know they tried their best. And it still still sucked. In this, it's the same thing. Like, I can see what they were going for. It gestures in the direction of good choices, but it (laughs) never actually hits the mark. There was definitely, there's definitely a notebook somewhere with the original screenplay before budget and and other stuff comes in where, where in your mind palace, it looks dope. Yeah. Right. But this isn't it. This is not when it, when put to film, it doesn't work. Get crest toothpaste <laughs> tunnels. Is that what they imagine being a Christian and seeing that interpretation of heaven? Would you reconsider? Would you be like, you know what? Maybe not. I don't know. Ooh, maybe I'll just voice do, crack. Maybe I'll just do butt stuff and meth instead. That's always a good choice. Butt stuff and meth at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Meth stuff in your butt. Anyway, so this was Escape from Hell. <laughs> Um, it's not great. I would recommend it. It's on YouTube. Watch it. it it's free, so I, I can recommend it more strongly. It doesn't fail because it's free. Weirdly, it's a really low quality, and it also, I assume, to try and evade copyright, whoever uploaded this, like, uploaded it. It's only an hour and 13 minutes. It's a real short movie. Um, and then they, like, tacked on the movie again from the beginning, but only, like, half of it, so that the timestamp was longer than the actual movie. That might have been it. I don't know. Either way... Check it out while it's still up. I assume it'll get taken down sooner or later, but... Well, it's been up for a while. Eh, well. Yeah. If we bring it traffic, though, you never know. We are very influential. Yeah, well, sometimes if we... if we do, yeah, happens. If we do a movie and it's on YouTube and we mention that, if you go to that the next day after it comes out, all the comments are like, here comes Hugo and Jake, mm. you know? So, I, did you... I, do we want to score it? I don't even know. 10 out of 10. Sure. Sure. Performances were just weird enough that I'll abstain. It kept me interested. Wow, a perfect score. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I get. Go watch it if you want. I I suggest doing it in a group. I was alone. It was. You were alone too. I guess you enjoy that kind of shit. This is what Martin Scorsese would call real cinema. Okay, taxi driver overrated fact. No, it's not. Don't get me. Don't start this argument. I'm not gonna. I don't want to talk about Taxi Driver for a fucking hour. Taxi Driver is a fucking amazing film. Yeah, if you like not liking the experience, you're wrong about fucking everything. It's gonna, so frustrating. I'm gonna have a two hour movie where I play one track of music. It's a fucking amazing. Beep! You liked the Joker, and the Joker is basically a fucking ripoff of Taxi the Joker Driver. is a better version of Taxi no, Driver don't for sure. Say that. Oh, oh yeah. God. For the record, I do not agree with him. Oh yeah. Please direct all your comments to his Twitter and not mine. Yeah, I don't go agree. Ahead. You're wrong. Oh my god. Anyway, if you like shows like this, I have a recommendation for you. Uh, there's another show on YouTube called Good Bad or Bad Bad. That is. Good, good. So go check it out. They also talk about bad movies, Breen movies, stuff like that. Check that out. There'll be a link in the description. Never seen it. It's good. You should check it out. Okay. <laughs> Maybe can, I will. Okay. You can always follow us on Twitter at uh, Papa Bird Jake. Follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You could also subscribe to the channel. Uh, and make sure you get the next thing that happens. Uh, I think we're doing an unboxing soon. Uh, we got some Bible study coming out. We probably, we're going to get back to Sharipo, uh, which has been Shapiro's nickname. So, uh, we'll have a lot of stuff happening. Um, if you like, uh, uh, some more political stuff, I do stuff over at twitch.tv slash actual Jake. Uh, there's lots of stuff going on over there all the time. It stream, I stream constantly. Um, if you want to help support the show or us, you can do so on Patreon. Again, link in the description is patreon.com slash Hugo and Jake, I assume. Um, it helps pay for all sorts of things. Name a thing. Um, this studio, my boobies. (laughs) If you, yeah, if you like boobies, if you like boobahs, knockers, 
Mm, what else? Those are the main two things. The studio. Laws and knockers? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, I guess that's it. Yeah. Sandwiches? I eat sandwiches from time to time. We'll get next. Soon we'll be doing Bible and Shapiro. He already said that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. What movie should we do next? Let us know in the comments.